Hey y'all, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's Christian here, you're tuned in for more of my two cents. If you are new to the channel, then welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm glad to have you here today. And if you are a returning two center, then welcome back. Hey fam, how y'all doing? Come on in, sit on down, get your glass, your cup, your snacks, whatever you need. Because I'm about to give you some good dialogue indeed. But before I do that, three points that matter most. Before we start any discussion, number one, you're not alone. Number two, you're not crazy. Number three, God, your creator still loves you. And I do too. Okay. Whew. Y'all, I don't know. I don't know. What I do know is I am going to try to, um, I'm going to try to tread lightly on this one. I'm going to try to tread lightly and be uh, very much guided in my words. I don't want to say I'm going to filter myself, but I am going to give my two cents and try to remain um, calm in the process. Okay. Cause y'all know how I can do <laughs> y'all know how I can do. Um, I'm going to remain. I'm, let me give you the facts. Okay. Let me just go ahead and introduce the topic. So, I was scrolling through social media and I saw a video shared by someone that I know who is a pastor's wife and it was a video of Jenny Weaver. I've never heard of Jenny Weaver. Don't know who Jenny Weaver is. I'm not in the spiritual, well, I'm not in the religious movement, Christianity sector like that where I would know who's the hot person, who's the viral person what the different videos are or clips that are circulating of people saying things in my opinion for shock value but to them it may be revelation knowledge that god wants them to convey to their audience right so i see this video shared and i click on the audio and it is this individual her name is jenny weaver which i now know up on research and she's talking about sage she's talking about saging and it's funny because saging has kind of become a um, hot topic over the last five years because people are using it. They're they're utilizing this tool and this this source, this resource, if you will, to rid evil spirits, to clean environments and atmospheres, and to you know be calm and to just you know find that zen space. And it's not a practice that I take on myself. Or that I've ever tried or ever even researched, I just don't do it, right? I don't really have an opinion on it either way or the other. But watching her clip, which I am going to play for you all, whew, ooh, child. Um, I give y'all my two cents after y'all watch the clip. But Jenny Weaver, uh, pictured here, um, man, oh man, upon doing more research. It is a lot. It's a lot that goes into this and it's a lot of moving parts that I want to just dive into and just try to get flush some of these thoughts out. Because to be honest with you all, these kind of situations and topics and the approach that people like Jenny and other pastors, I believe uh, Jamal Bryant has talked about saging before as well. Um, I, I don't see how it helps anything. You know, I don't I don't really see how it does anything other than condemn and rebuke people for practices that might be helpful to them. Maybe it's not something you choose to do. Uh, maybe it's not something that you believe in. But we're going to break down some of the things that people in church Christians do believe in. Which are which are very hypocritical. When it comes to talking about saging. But before we get there, I would rather you guys hear from Jenny herself what she has to say about her viral video. Obviously, she did a video that went viral and made it to Larry Reed's platform. I did not see that one. I saw this one. And so this is the one I'm going to post because she's doubling down on whatever her stance was initially on Sage that got her to Larry Reed's platform. So let's get into it, and I'll be back with my two cents. When I got put on Larry Reed, I said, oh, Lord. I know I'm just stomping on devils now because you don't get on Larry Reed unless something has happened for real. And they took a little clip of me talking about burning sage. And guess what? I'm not changing what I said then or now. Take this clip too, remix it, and put it right back up as a part two. 
burning sage will bring in sage smelling demons it ain't getting rid of nothing use the blood of the lamb and your authority in christ and tell the devil get out in the mighty name of jesus christ you gotta go you can't stay up in here devil go 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 when i got put on larry Okay, so that is Jenny Weaver, and those are her thoughts, views, and opinions. That's her two cents on Sage, okay? <laughs> sage is demonic, okay? According to Jenny, according to Jenny, and according to um, a lot of people, according to a lot of people in church, Sage is demonic. It is a doorway that opens up to the enemy and evil spirits, right? And as she stated, Sage ain't getting rid of nothing. You better plead the blood of Jesus over that thing and tell Satan he got to go. Now, see, that for me is when the first hypocritical red flag is raised. Because being someone who was once in church heavily and hearing all of this vernacular in these terms. And, then, and, and, and next, I'm going to give you the background on Jenny. Okay, because it's important that we know where Jenny comes from. I'm going to tell you where I come from and then I'm going to tell you where Jenny comes from. Where I come from, being taught to plead the blood of Jesus, to cover yourself in the blood of Jesus, to pray in terms of you quoting and, you know, putting the blood of Jesus on everything, right? Like, I plead the blood of Jesus, right? Saying you're rebuked in the name of Jesus. I cast you out. Like, all of these things are tools that are given for you to drive out evil spirits. And telling someone to plead the blood of another individual, yes, in your belief system and in your culture, that is sacred, holy ground, sacred, holy terms in order to cast out, remove, and to uh, rebuke spirits or entities that are coming against you. It didn't matter what happened to me growing up. If my head was hurting, if I fell, if uh, we were sick, my mama was pleading the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus against you. We bind you, devil. Cursed be your power in the name of Jesus. I have heard that exact verbiage in that form for my entire life. I've heard pastors preach, that, uh, preach it. I've heard people pray it just that way the blood is against you the blood of jesus is against you we bind you devil cursed be your power in jesus mighty name release them i command you to go take your leave now you have no place here i can go into it immediately from regular conversation to flow of rebuking and casting out spirits you want to know why because i was indoctrinated my entire life to believe think and practice that way and just as Jenny is sharing that we are supposed to, or by we, I mean y'all, that we as individuals, believers, whatever you may call yourself, are supposed to not use sage and plead the blood, what is the exact difference? You are literally calling on the blood of another person that you claim was shed for your life and your salvation. That doesn't sound ritualistic and weird to you so i suppose this message is really for believers and not for the rest of the world because there's no way you could be rebuking people who choose to use sage to rid spirits or to solve uh troubling environments you can't be talking to them because if they don't believe the way that you do then what you're talking against or speaking against holds no power and no weight especially when you're practicing it yourself in a different format in your in your religion okay so i would go on to find out that as rich as it would be that um jenny weaver has a past so as i continue to just look her up and look at some different things a lot of pieces fell into place it started with this one video and within 10 minutes oh my goodness so much other stuff unfolded on my phone and I was like wait, 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 this huh this one I didn't see other stuff from her but I didn't know it was her like you don't be knowing who you don't know I've seen other 
other clips and other videos and other posts shared from her by other people who are staunch Christians. And I'm like, oh, okay. It makes sense. It all made sense to me. So after finding out that she had a um, past actually in witchcraft. So these are her mugshots. And on her website, I went directly to her website and screenshot this. So there is no misconception and I'm not um, putting words in anyone's mouth or surmising what someone was or did. I took it directly from there and I'm putting it on the screen so we can read it together. Okay. Just like at church read Jenny Weaver is a wife and homeschool mother. She believes in building families and communities in the kingdom of God. She is best known for singing the scriptures uh, live each week on her Facebook page. Hundreds of thousands of people view each week from all over the world and share their testimonies of how their lives have changed since watching Jenny sing the scriptures. <sighs> okay. Once a homeless drug addict, self-cutting Wiccan, Jenny is now a true worshiper and lover of God, transformed by his renewing power. Jenny's heart is to lead people into an encounter with the Holy Spirit that will transfer it form them as well. Her inspirational testimony was picked up by Sid Roth on It's Supernatural and aired in 2019. She also released her first book titled The Sound of Freedom with Destiny Image Publishing Company. Coming soon. And a quote from Jenny says, I am amazed at the hand of God on my life. Um, let me say this. This, seeing this when I went to her website gave me so much clarity and so much perspective and I immediately went from wanting to feel as if though something like girl chill out I went from feeling like that at first that was my two cents sitting in my living room I was like she is something else like the rest of these pastors but then when I read this I immediately felt a different sense of this definitely gives, um, whew. you know how when people first turn away from whatever they were doing that, let's call it wicked, wrong, out there, whatever, or from the world. Let's just say when someone comes off from being worldly and buck wild, okay? I don't know how to put this stuff into terms because I don't really see all of it that way. But let's just say that that's what it is. When people decide to become Christians and to um, give their lives over to God, it usually goes to an extreme. They usually go to an extreme where everything is the devil. Everything is Satan because they've lived through so much that that is how they present their salvation to the world. They're like, and people in church are calling, oh, she's on fire for God. He's on fire for God. They're passionate. You can feel it when they speak. Okay, I'll give you that. But let me just say this. What you used to do as people who are converted will say, I used to be, you know, a child of Satan. I used to be out there for Satan. I was a representative for Satan. Why should I come in church now and keep my mouth shut for God? Ain't nobody telling you to do that. Go forth the way you feel like you're called to do, okay? I just feel as if though in this situation, watching and seeing the other clips, which I'm going to do a separate video on something else that I've seen from her, which I didn't know was from her until I was doing research on this video, um, I was shocked. And I immediately started feeling like this sense of this is what this is. This is, this is extreme conversion this is an ex extreme conversion journey and testimony that has the power to shift some people but also push other people away and the unfortunate part about it is while to the person that's been converted and has reformed their lives and all of that they feel like it's passion and they're going hard for God and God is pleased and they're pulling souls out of hell and all of that. Not a problem if that's what you believe. However, it would it would do you 
some good to actually be in relationship where hopefully whoever you're talking to or whoever's talking to you, God, I'm referring to who, whatever source is speaking to you would give you understanding and clarity to be able to rightly divide knowledge, truth, and understanding. Because my points here from just logic, right? I don't like to reference scripture when I talk about this kind of stuff because people get, it gets cloudy. If you want to use scripture to talk to me about something that I simply need a logical explanation for, don't introduce your belief system here. Just give me basic logic definition and, and foundation. They don't have it. And what I would like for her to give, because I'm not here to say, oh, she used to be a witch girl, you off your rocker. No, no, I don't care about her past as a Wiccan. Her mugshot don't mean nothing to me. Everybody has a past, right? So some people may not have a mugshot, but they did a lot of illegal stuff. They just never got caught for it. <laughs> so her having one doesn't move me either way. I just think that it's the attitude and the energy at which you then transform your relationship and your deliver your message to people as if though what you're saying is the infallible truth and there is no other balance or way to see it when you're practicing it in other ways in church. I would like to call your attention to. Mm -hmm, I'm still here. My call didn't drop. I just got silent so y'all can look at the screen and see exactly what I'm talking about. If we don't, if we're going to talk about sage, you all, it is important, importante. Okay, y'all know that's my favorite Spanish word. It is importante that we also list out the things that you all use in church that are equivalent to sage. Sage is something she's condemning, but then will turn around and anoint head, heads, foreheads, feet, hands, throats, eyes, lips, backs, chest, stomachs, thighs, right, with extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> I can't make this up. I can't make this stuff up. And you have to understand, just like she has a testimony of coming out of something, right? Being an ex-drug addict, um, uh, a Wiccan, which I believe is likened to a witch, right? If I'm not mistaken, I saw where she or someone was describing what she used to be as a white witch. So she was like a good witch, okay? Um, you are talking about sage maybe because when you was practicing whatever you were practicing doing whatever you was doing maybe you saw it used in a bad way maybe you used it in a bad way maybe you knew people who used it and it didn't go well for them I don't know what the case may be but what I can tell you is that the transferring of symbolism and things used for representation is right here on the screen if we went from sage to this once we got converted what exactly is the difference according to your scripture this is completely approved normal and okay to use this is completely okay to use now when you go to the listing online okay for pumping extra virgin olive oil what will it list for you it will say first cold pressed Full bodied flavor. And this is my favorite. This is my favorite use for this blessed oil. Perfect for salads and marinades. <laughs> Y'all be sending me, okay? Sending me scent. Straight scent. There is, mm -mm. I have been sent. There is nowhere else you can send me. I have been sent there. Okay. It is important that we understand that the use of sage, you guys. When I got put on Larry Reed, I said, oh, Lord. 
I'm sorry. I My notes are on that screen with her. Give me one moment. Y'all finna have to listen to her real quick because I need to get these notes. When I got put on Larry Reed, I said, oh, Lord. I know. Okay. Thank y'all for bearing with me, okay? Understanding that blessed oil is extra virgin olive oil to the rest of the world, used for salads and marinades, full body flavor. This product right here, this is the old packaging. This is what my mama had at our house growing up. And full disclosure, because, and, and what I was, the point I was trying to make earlier, I was saying that just as her story talks about her being a Wiccan and a, a drug addict and having mug shots and all that other stuff, I have a conversion story of deconstructing from the toxicity of Christianity. Some people may call it backsliding. Some people may call it uh, being deceived, right? Like the enemy has gotten in, crept in, and is deceiving me. I would like to submit to you that I'm not deceived at all. Quite the contrary. I am actually enlightened. I'm actually able to rightly divide truth, knowledge, and understanding. I don't go into this stuff anymore with, with gray, smoky shades on just accepting whatever someone else is saying because they said it, because they have a title or they have a platform. What she gets to do now is use her testimony of what she used to do that people in church would look at as evil and turn that to become a radical voice that people should follow and listen to and see as their deliverance testimony for inspiration. But it is dangerous because the same things are in work and at practice amongst you but you get to dress it up and call it something different because they now believe like you y'all don't want to hear me y'all don't want to amen me y'all don't want to hit my cash app up because that's what they want from y'all <laughs> they're okay with receiving the things that make them feel like they are absolutely positively the end all be all truth or it's something that you haven't even looked into that you've never even considered could be a different way this extra virgin olive oil is meant to be used to cook. But do you know what it's used for in church, in Christianity specifically? Like I said, to anoint doorposts, as in the Bible, when they use the blood, when they use the blood on the doorpost to keep the spirits, evilness from coming into their house and stealing the lives and the souls of those that were inside. So sage is a problem, but extra virgin olive oil that's been blessed by you is not. What exactly did you speak out of your mouth to bless this cooking oil? Curses? A ritual? You meditated over it? You consecrated it? You put it on an altar? <laughs> the games, the games and the hypocrisy. And I'm okay with blessed oil. And guess what else? I'm okay with sage. I'm okay with whatever you choose to use for whatever works for you. If you believe sage is demonic, cool. I don't care. That's your business. If you believe that blessed oil is better, great. Use it. That's your business. What I don't understand is why does one have to be demonized and the other one is completely validated for use and to go on your salad too. Adult individuals are going and getting oil out of the cooking aisle to anoint on an altar to use. And that's okay. Pleading the blood of another person is normal. But then looking at the ritual of sage is demonic. Okay, so upon me looking into what saging is, I like to come correct with all of the facts so that y'all can make y'all own decision. The internets, okay, Beyonce and um, all the people, all the people's internet, okay, because it's everybody's internet at this point. This is Jeff Bezos' internet. This is Elon Musk's internet. This is Oprah's. This is Tyler Perry's. This is mine. This is yours. It's everybody's internet. The internet says the ritual of sage burning has its roots in Native American tradition. Today, people burn sage and other holy herbs to cleanse a space or environment of negative energy, to generate wisdom and clarity, and to promote healing. What exactly is the difference between this ritual and this history 
and the history that I was taught as a child to anoint my head every morning before I went to school, rubbing it on my scalp when my hair was breaking, breaking off or falling off and my mama wanted it to stop putting blessed oil in my head. If I was coughing, had a cold or was sick, it wasn't no Vicks Vapor Rub, baby. It was getting blessed oil rubbed on your chest, on your body. Laying down and literally letting my mother anoint my entire body from head to toe in blessed oil. Walking around smelling like extra virgin olive oil all day as a child. That's completely normal to you all. But sage burning for someone else with their beliefs is not. And again, I have to say, I don't have a problem with the blessed oil. But when does it become demonic when what you're using is not? Allegedly, according to you and your beliefs. If it does not work for you, don't practice it. Don't use it. But to close-mindedly be, be, let it become a thing of you're releasing spirits or you're letting something in, I don't feel like that's, that benefits anyone. It don't benefit nobody. But that ain't it. That ain't it. Because that blessed oil, that may have y'all in a chokehold. But I'm going to show y'all what got his whole foot on y'all neck. I'm still here. My phone didn't drop. <laughs> I'm, I'm just here waiting for you guys to tell me what y'all believe about these, these prayer shawls. What do y'all believe about these prayer shawls? Speak into the microphone. What do you believe about these prayer shawls? Nothing. The same thing. What, what is it doing? Ritual symbolism. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> you supposed to wear this while you do what? Pray, right? While you engage in what? Worship, right? You're supposed to be using this to cover and anoint yourself for ceremonial prayers. <laughs> and let me show y'all the main ambassador. I'm still here. My call didn't drop. <laughs> like, it's, it's the need for you all to understand that in order for things to have shock value, to become a sound bite, to become clickbait for virality. She even said it. She said it. Take this video, splice it up, break it down, do whatever you want to do with it. She was completely okay with it because in her mind, God has given her this platform for it to go viral so that she can spread the word even more. That's what people in church believe when they do things like this that is definitely shock value content it is meant to um reach the masses and so the energy behind it is oh yeah this gonna get them oh yeah this gonna shut them down oh yeah this gonna show them right here oh yeah they gonna know this from god but the moment ends up being so unbelievably in my opinion reckless then of course you go viral same thing happened with tiffany with the ph her saying what she said about beyonce definitely helped her in numbers and in notoriety to her she would say that that was just god's way of taking her to another level for other things that happened after that but you, what you have to understand you have to connect yourself with and align yourself with those things firing off in your in your favor like, you got to know, like, whatever you're revving up for or moving towards, it's for this outcome, no matter what that, how, how you get there. But when things go viral and things blow up, then I'll be like, I'm, I, like, like, like Jenny said in the beginning, I really knew I was stepping on, on, on enemies' heads or on the devil's neck or whatever she said when I made it to Larry Reed's platform. Because to her, what she's thinking is, I'm really doing a lot of work for the kingdom. I'm really out here having a lot of impact in the kingdom. Whenever my message makes it to a platform that big, because my platform ain't that big. But see, people tend to want to talk about things that 
really ain't adding up. And it's like, no, let me get some different perspective here. Because this ain't what it is. Like, let me counteract that. Just in case you said something to someone that may have found a benefit in that practice. Why are you now introducing that as a problem? But y'all okay with this. And y'all okay with this. And y'all okay with her selling this. <laughs> y'all, don't play with me. Don't play with me. I'm I'm out here trying to come for, you know, uh uh what 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 what's my girl name? Barbara Walters job. I'm out here trying to be, I'm trying to present the news. I'm trying to break down the stories. I'm trying to give a little, you know, insight to the people on what exactly is happening. Cause this stuff is not making sense. So you have the prayer cloth, the prayer shawl. And I'm going to read and, and I'm going to unpack this, okay? So the prayer shawl, I, I know my mama got at least one in her prayer room. I know she do. I've seen it. Um, and I've never touched it. I didn't know. I knew. I've never seen her with it on either. But I've seen her lay on it. Um, I've seen it at churches on the pastor's seat. In the on the stage, I was supposed to say on the pulpit, on the stage, I've seen them. Y'all have too. Y'all probably have, have seen them hanging up on walls in the foyer of churches, wherever. So when I go to the product description page for this, I'm I'm low-key getting a headache because I'm t I am like so over this stuff. I'm so over the hypocrisy. It is mind-boggling how people literally are not exercising their own free will and right to think for themselves. Use the sage if you want to and use these prayer, these, these prayer shawls and use this extra virgin olive oil that go on salads and marinades if you want to. That's your business. Shout out to Tabitha Brown. Now, the product description on this website that I went on, and then we're going to look at the kit that uh, Juanita Bynum is selling for $44. So the product description for this prayer shawl right here, it says, add meaning to times of ceremonial prayer with, with Hebrew talit. A prayer shawl. I hope I'm saying it right. Talit, talit, okay. In white with striped accents in blue and metallic gold. The collar features the messianic roots symbol and a Hebrew prayer, which reads, Blessed are you, O Lord, King of the universe, who has fulfilled all of the law through Jesus, the Messiah, and has covered us with his righteousness. Each of the four corners are accented with a different scripture verse in English taken from Matthew 14, 36, Isaiah, uh, Corinthians, Malak and Malachi. Fashioned of acrylic measures, 72 uh, long, 22 inches wide. Exquisite in design and workmanship with tassel trim and ceremonial fringes. Also includes matching zippered bag with embroidered roots symbol. <sighs> This is fine. This is fine because this fits your this fits your belief and your practices. These are fine. It's fine for her to have this on and to be summonsing or praying and doing ceremonial ritualistic things on our screens with the phone number down at the bottom. That's totally fine. That's not a problem for you. It's totally fine for Juanita Bynum International presents a prayer kit. My prayer kit. Now on the website, this prayer kit is now so nicely um, for the cost of $44. But here it shows for a $133 love offering. Is that what this said? Oh my God. My prayer kit for $133 love offering. That's a love offering, you guys. Why can't it just be how much it costs? Because... The love bombing is real in church, of course. But to put love offering on the back of that, though. <laughs> Games. Let's go over what's in Juanita Bynum's My Prayer Kit. The description on her website says, The prayer kit is a sacred and secret weapon in the arsenal of a believer. Now, I'm just, I'm just looking at two things that Christians use. And Jenny had a problem with sage. But y'all out here with things you're rubbing on yourself and things that you're covering yourself up with. 
and that's totally normal and fine for you. That gets a pass. Gotcha. Not it's a sacred and secret weapon, but let me continue. Through prayer, Elijah closed and opened the heavens. Wow. <laughs> my God, my God. Opened and closed the heavens. Hannah received her son and Daniel brought deliverance to the nation of Israel. Beliefs is all about individual beliefs. One does not have to infringe upon another's. But that's not how y'all believe. Y'all are completely intolerant of other people's practices, even though they are not bothering you. This prayer kit has been saturated and preserved in a consecrated place with the intent of releasing divine healing, deliverance, breakthroughs, and restoration to every person that receives it. I'm not making this up. Go to her website for yourself if you want to see it with your own eyeballs. This prayer kit has been saturated and preserved in a consecrated place with the intent of releasing divine healing, deliverance, breakthroughs, and restoration to every person that receives it. And sage is the problem. Got it. The harvest on this invaluable love gift will bless you and your household for generations to come. The harvest on this invaluable love gift is not invaluable because you have it set at a cute $133 love offering. It's not invaluable. You've set a value. Child. Okay. What is included? The 5 a.m. prayer t-shirt. Optional. The 5 a.m. prayer is also a gift of connection to use during your time of prayer privately and or to wear during 5 a.m. prayer with Dr. Bynum. Oh, so now you need to put this t-shirt on the call in and pray with me. Optional. If you want to get it, cool. But the 5 a.m. prayer t-shirt. Y'all have got to want to use your own brain. You've got to want to use it and not be played with. Because she doesn't have a real product to sell. She has to create stuff that literally is personally branded. For her own gain. Got it. The oil. Mm. Just talked about the, the extra virgin. Let's see what hers include. The oil from the beginning of the establishment of the tabernacle. Like the women that God sent Elisha to. Word vomit is real right now. They're saying a lot of nothing in these, in these product descriptions. And I need you guys to notice that. And I'm saying that as a person who has over... 28 products product description is everything and nothing at the same time and she's on the nothing side they're saying a lot of nothing to get something $133 to be exact continue this process and adhere to the three days of consecration so that your oil will never run out what exodus 40 verse 9 and you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it. And you shall hallow it in all its utensils and it shall be holy. Number seven and one. Now it came to pass when Moses had finished setting up the tabernacle that he anointed it and consecrated it in all its furnishings and the altar and all its utensils. So he anointed them and consecrated them. Was it with oil or what did he just like go over it and speak over it or just... I don't, I don't even care the handkerchief these are all things that are a part of this kit because she has to increase the value in order to justify the price again coming from someone with over 28 products I understand what she's doing a bundle will definitely increase your AOV average order value she wants to be able to justify charging you 133 so I need to put as much as I can in here and use as many words as I can to describe it to make them feel as if though there's actual value when there's none. Or very little. I'll say that. 
and God wrought special miracles. This is the description for the handkerchief that's included. So far in this kit, you get the 5 a.m. prayer t-shirt and the oil. Now you get the handkerchief, which is the third product. Um, and God wrought spe uh, special miracles through the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Acts 19, 12. But Sage, Sage can't do that, but this handkerchief can. <laughs> Woo! Hypocrisy, hypocrisy. I highly doubt Jenny will ever see this video, but if Jenny ever did, Jenny, all I'm just asking you to do, Jenny, okay? Shout out to Jenny from Forrest Gump. Jenny, Jenny, all I'm asking you to do is just consider that Sage may need to go into these prayer kits that your girl Juanita selling. Because Juanita is out here selling uh, handkerchiefs that will rid evil spirits and remove diseases. And according to the good old sage, that's what it do too. And that was by the Native Americans. And I believe them. I believe in the natives. Let's be very clear. Okay. And lastly, we get to the prayer shawl. Say the last, best for last, honey. The prayer shawl, the talent. The scriptural and physical significance of the prayer shawl has been observed by rabbis and leaders of the faith since the times of the biblical temple. In Numbers 15, 38 through 40, it reads, Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a rib, a rib, a ribbon of blue. They spelled this wrong. That's not how you spell ribbon. A ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye used to go a whoring. <laughs> okay. That ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. Again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything about that. I, whatever. I just feel like it's a, 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 a gross misuse and misplacement of scripture just so there's something to say and you know do what you want to do with that but i would prefer some of these people let chat gpt start right writing their product descriptions because they have nothing of value to give and it's not even inspiring let alone you know motivating to actually get it this it's nothing here there's no substance and i really i really hate that i really do because me reading this as a business owner and as a product developer who actually coaches and mentor people to develop products, this is blowing my mind right now of how much fluff is in these. <laughs> okay. Next up, the sacred prayer bag. The sacred prayer bag is used for you to store your prayer shawl to protect it from damage, exposure, and access to outside elements. And lastly, this water bottle. This water bottle. Mm. This is a gift of connection to use during your time of prayer and consecration. A water bottle is a gift of connection? What? I'm not, I'm not lying to y'all. This is on the website for Juanita Bynum's prayer kit. It includes a water bottle and they said that it is a gift of connection to use during your time of prayer and consecration. If the games that you all desire to play goes like this, keep playing them. People like Jenny, like Juanita, like Tiffany with the PH, like Jamal Bryant, or any of these other pastors, I ain't gonna even get on these prophets right now. I ain't gonna get on these prophets. I've been watching, I've been sitting back, keeping my mouth shut. I ain't been saying it. I'm like, I ain't gonna say none. I ain't gonna say nothing about these prophets. I ain't gonna say nothing about these prophets. I ain't gonna say nothing about Pro Prophet Lovey. I ain't gonna say nothing about him. I ain't gonna say, I ain't gonna touch Prophet Lovey. I ain't gonna say nothing about him just yet. I haven't been 
<laughs> I've not been directed just yet to touch him, but it's coming. I've seen some things that definitely, definitely are red flags. But who are me? Right? I'm just here to give my two cents. And what I am going to say about this video specifically is that if Sage is a problem for the believer to use, what makes this approved? What makes this approved? You all? Because see, y'all got to anoint it in order to make it something. Sage just needs to be lit in order for it to do what it was meant to do or to be used in a way that it has actually already been ritualistically um, expressed or determined to be effective. But these, y'all actually have to pray over them y'all self. So what spirits are y'all invoking? What ritual and, and, and um, entities are you all welcoming and inviting? What if your environment is messed up not at peace, not really blessed or anointed to be doing any of this stuff. And y'all out here opening gates and portals and doors as y'all claim, Sage does. What if y'all doing that when y'all blessing y'all extra virgin olive oil that was meant for salads and marinades? Couldn't touch this stuff growing up. We, 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 my mama never cooked with extra virgin olive oil anyway. But we knew that this wasn't up for use. We didn't use Vaseline or lotion sometimes. We use this for our bodies. I'm not lying to you guys. I'm being straight up. Straight up and down like 6 o'clock. I'm being straight up with you guys. I'm not speaking from a place of ignorance. I'm speaking from a place of experience. And I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm just keeping it real. Her testimony of what she came from has now converted her into a radical believer that is out here saying all kinds of things and doing all kinds of things that are extremely questionable to me. And the fact that she has the platform and the following that she does full of women, <laughs> let me be clear, is concerning. But it actually is not surprising, but it's concerning. I'm not surprised because I just gave y'all the statistics of how many people in church are women. It's not surprising that it's all women, but it's concerning. Same thing with Tiffany. All of the women that follow her. Not surprised, but I am concerned. Even with these pastors. It ain't men. It's women who follow them. I'm not surprised, but I am concerned. So if I'm doing nothing else here on these videos, let me at least be a voice for you to consider to maintain your autonomy and your freedom. Mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Stop being targeted by these people who are just out here for sound bites, virality, and shock value. Start asking these people, what do they propose what do they propose we use instead? What do you propose we do instead since we can't burn the sage, even though I'm not doing it anyway? But what would you say the people should use then? The blessed oil from the store? Huh? <laughs> the prayer shawl in the kit from, you know, from her? Okay. If it don't make sense when you say it out loud, stop saying it. Because it don't make sense to me. That's why I will not repeat this to nobody else. But I just thought it was very interesting that sis doubled down. She said it again. Because it's, it's a point to be made. I made it to that platform. God is getting the glory. I made it to that platform. God wants this message out there. When to be honest with you, it just works for your brand and your platform to be a shock jock. But hey, don't, I mean, it ain't. It ain't changing about what I do or don't do. I'm just out here to present some different options to you. If the sage is a problem, then the oil is. And so are these shawls. And if the shawls and the oil are get a pass, so does the sage. Use whatever you want. Just make sure that it makes you and your beliefs align with what you actually get as a result. Okay? All right. If y'all have enjoyed the video, like it. 
uh, subscribe to the channel. I love it. Add you to my two cents crew. Drop down in the comments below and let me know what are your thoughts about these uh, rituals, these uh, resources, these symbolistic uh, measures that are being used in order to reach people or deter people from actually getting the release or the freedom that they need in their own lives. Until next time, I'll catch y'all in the next video. Take care. Bye.